Hey guys, it's Troy again. Been doing some tinkering today. Wanted to share with you a little bit of what I've been working on. Uh, the last video you saw me with this Waterman 52V, and I've been working on it more and more, some polishing compounds and uh, trying to get it to look just even a little nicer and uh, trying to bring this more out to its former glory. So little bit by bit I've been tinkering with this since I've had the time to do so. It is actually looking better. If, if you had seen it when I first got it compared to now, then, then you'd know. So that kind of inspired me to play a little bit more with some other uh, pens that I've got laying around. And one of the ones that I wanted to work on was a Waterman 3V. In case you're not familiar with those, uh, here it is. Here's a Waterman 3V. This one was given to me, actually, by a collector uh, at the Raleigh Pen Show, and it's missing the clip. You can tell that uh, there probably was a clip somewhere right around here uh, that came down over the pen. Let me show you the book um, and show you this particular pen in the book, The Waterman Past and Present, the First Six Decades. I shared with you this book in my last video, and uh, as you can see here, circa 1933 to 1938 this is the very pen right there the 3V and that looks an awful lot like that right there so V uh, has a designation for vest so it would be one that if you're wearing like a three-piece suit and you've got a vest pocket uh, that that would easily be able to slide into there today we call them pocket pens um, so 1930s Waterman 3V and you can probably see right on there it does say 3V right there now this was given to me because two things number one um, the the guy who had this particular pen all he wanted out of it was the nib so we happened to have this laying around and he said that's eh, no use to me here you can have it so he gave it to me so the nib was non-existent um, now I managed to scrounge up a nib and this one has a a Waterman manifold nib that uh, I had gotten from somebody. So I was able to, to work on piecing the two together. So let's see, uh, uh, to just today what I did was I, um, you know, I had already put the nib in into this thing, uh, or uh, at least into the, uh, the section. Uh, it came with the feed. I'm not convinced that this is the right feed for it or the original feed for it only because of the way it fits together um, but I went ahead and I did put it together and it gave me a slight hassle at the beginning uh, but let's see how it does here I filled this um, with a, a Waterman ink just like I did the 52 V or the 52 rather so this is a Waterman 3 V and in it I have a number two Waterman nib which actually writes fairly like a medium uh, and it is a manifold nib uh, the, the Waterman manifold nib so it actually writes fairly smoothly um, at first when I first inked it up it gave me a little hard time with ink flow uh, but then once I you know, got it going, it actually started flowing fairly well. So these little pocket pens, I've got several of them. This is like the third uh, 32 uh, V or, or 3 V uh, series that I've got. Um, and it does okay. I mean, I'm not a big fan of pocket pens, but I'm into Waterman's. So I've got several of them. I've got uh, Black Chased Hard Rubber one. I've got another one like this that's not too far off from this particular color or variety. Uh, and... Uh, so I went ahead and put into this one the Waterman Intense Black. So, you know, hey, I've got another one up and running that uh, wasn't up and running <laughs> as of this morning. So, um, and at some time I need to go ahead and uh, do a video on how to replace an ink sack. I just happen to have a couple of sacks around that with the appropriate size for this particular one. So that led me, though, between that and the fact that I saw one just like this advertised for sale on Spear Bob's uh, eBay uh, page. Uh, this is the very first 
uh, vintage pen I ever purchased. It's from the 1940s. Um, I know some had said 1950s, but the box that it came with actually had an inscription written on the box to somebody from 1947. So that's why I'm dating this in the, into the 40s rather than into the 50s. But this is an imperial. Now you see right there on that, that clip it says imperial. When I first bought this pen, I knew absolutely nothing uh, about fountain pens in general. Just the, the, the couple of them that I had owned and had used. I mean, I had a total of three pens to my name at that point, maybe, maybe four. Um, and I uh, didn't know much about them. Now, the person who sold me this, this clip it does say made in the USA, told me that this was a Schaefer Imperial. Mm, no. So for a while, I took them at their word that it was a Schaefer Imperial, and it was only after learning more about fountain pens and about the brand that I determined, okay, it's Imperial brand. It is not a Schaefer. And when I learned about Schaefer's, it kind of irritated me that I had this one. I have fought with this pen more than any other pen in my collection because when I got it, it is obvious that the pen had been chucked in a drawer, still inked, and... Um, this is how I learned how to replace ink sacs was because of this pen. I started to do some research. I got online. I found Richard Bender's website that talked about how to replace an ink sack. And he said it was actually fairly simple. So I trusted him and I bought the supplies. So I bought uh, some sacks. I didn't really know what size to get. So I did a little measuring with a ruler. Well, now I've got uh, a set of calipers and uh, so I'm able to tell a little bit better and I know much more about ink sacks than I used to. <laughs> so this particular one I thought I was gonna go and fix today um, and I've got more tools at my disposal and more knowledge than I had in fighting with this. This is probably the fourth or fifth time I've pulled this pen out and decided to play with it. So I gave this particular pen probably the bath of its lifetime or at least the section part and it now is very clean. Now, don't, I'm not talking about necessarily the ink stains that are here around the there. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about on the inside. One of the problems I had with this is I don't know much about how to take, tear this thing apart because it tapers down. You've got the feed and the nib. I'm assuming it comes out this way. Uh, but when you pull it apart, and it should be e fairly easy to pull apart because... I've had it set up that way. Um, you can see it's had a, a lot of ink over the years, caked, a lot of grunge in there, but believe it or not, that's still a heck of a lot better than it was just this morning. Because I had an ink sack on it, like the third ink sack I placed on it because I'd done work on it. Now it didn't work so well. I get it to write for just a little bit and it would quit. So what I really probably need to do eventually is to knock that feed out. That I need to buy some more tools and I'm assuming it doesn't come this way, that it would come out this way, um, and I don't want to ruin it because I'm not that adept at it. But what I can tell you is I let this thing soak for cycle after cycle after cycle um, in pen flush in uh, my ultrasonic cleaner and got a whole lot of gunk out of it. Uh, and it flows nice and clear and it flows easily now. So I am hoping that it'll write well. So I went ahead to go start to uh, replace the sack on it again. And I went into my sacks and uh, I had a 12, I have a, some 14s, a 16, and a 20. Well, the 16 is what I fought with before, had to really stretch it. And this is a size 18 as it takes right here. So um, 18 64ths of an inch or 9 seconds of an inch is what my caliper said so I know it means um, when you when you see a number on the uh, ink sack it simply means um, it is how many 64ths of an inch so this is 18 64ths of an inch so I need to order some number 18 ink sacks I'm not gonna bother even though I'd already gotten it out and uh, I just assumed falsely I should have measured first dipstick that I am that it uh, takes a, a number 18 instead of a number 16. I just, uh, because I had used 16s previously, I forgot all about the fact of how tight they are and how far you had to stretch a 16 to fit on this thing. 
so I know that I'm not going to bother fighting with it anymore. I can even cut the ink sack to length, and I was, you know, and I thought to myself, you idiot, you should have known, you should have checked before you ever got out that sack. So I'm going to order some number 18 uh, sacks, and I'm going to order uh, some number 17 sacks, because Waterman typically takes a number 17. I can tell you that a 16 will do fairly well, they'll go on fairly easy, but really it should be like a number 17, because it's 17 64ths of an inch of diameter from you know across here. So that's what you're measuring here is the diameter. So I'm going to wait till I get some number 18 sacks to put on here to see if I can get this one resurrected and writing properly rather than horribly like I had it. And like I said, it's flowing much better now. It's probably had an incredible bath compared to any other time since its creation. So at least on the inside, it seems to be flowing nicely. So anyway, that's that's the latest for me. Um, you know, I thought about buying a brand new one when I saw this one. I was like, hey, that's, that's the exact one. I actually have the matching pencil that goes with it too. And uh, on Spear Bob's uh, eBay listing, it's only the pen itself for about $17.50. So I thought about just ordering it uh, so I would have it, uh, but then I said, mm, I don't know, let me see if I can beat this one into submission and uh, give it more work since I know more about what I'm doing and I got more tools than I had the last few go-arounds I had with this particular pen. But alas, I was hoping to have this one up and running today but and polish it up. I didn't bother you know, doing uh, polishing up the outsides of it uh, yet. Uh, I figure, you know, I'll get the I'll get the ink sacks first, and then I'll work on it, and I'll give you an update when that happens. So, uh, my Imperial, not Schaefer Imperial pen, <laughs> as I eventually found out. So, those are my adventures in uh, playing with vintage pens for today. So, thanks for watching. I always appreciate it when you folks watch. It's very humbling. Uh, thank you.